Oh, I took your advice. I bought a house. I'm going to make some money. I said, at the top of the frickin' market? Don't listen to your stupid real estate agent who tells you that, oh, the price of real estate always goes up because it doesn't. When I hear people coming up to me, oh, the price of real estate going up and they're jumping in to buy real estate right now, I don't say anything. And the reason is, is that people are just getting into the hype. All this credit is actually debt, credit and debt, pumping into this economy, trying to prevent this crash. And if inflation keeps going, I get richer. I am extremely happy. And I think Biden, I'm not Republican or Democrat, he intentionally wants inflation. That's why he shut down the XL pipeline. That's why he stopped drilling to get oil prices up. When oil prices go up, you know, all these truckers in Ottawa screaming, they can't get food to the table and all this. Prices of food go up. Inflation keeps going up regardless of what's going on, just because the policies of the Biden administration shutting down the XL pipeline, stopping drilling of oil. So the price of oil goes up. I watch all this. And meanwhile, these people are jumping out and buying real estate like there's no tomorrow, and I can't even talk to them. We're on a turning point. But please understand, ladies and gentlemen, inflation makes the rich extremely rich. The middle class will pay higher taxes, and the poor will get poor because they're the ones who can't afford the $25 Wagyu steak that my friends are selling. So that's why it's one of the biggest critical turning points. And that's why I don't know how many years ago when I walked past Rich's book and Borders, and it says a dollar crisis. If you understand what's going on, the problem is the U.S. dollar. Because in 1944, it stopped being money. It just became the reserve currency of the world. And in 71, Nixon took the dollar off the gold standard. We're being set up right now one of the biggest changes in world history. And it's, oh, I bought a property. What do you think? I can't, I can't even talk to him. Because this, to me, is 2007 all over again. And then the repo market collapsed. 2008, the market collapsed. And back in 2008, this guy named Bernanke, I believe it was, could print money. And this is where we are today. You've got to wake up, ladies and gentlemen, because otherwise you're just this stupid little hog just driving to slaughter. So America is one of the, we're at not just America, we're one of the biggest turning points in world history. And like, there was Rockefeller, one of those guys said is, when shoe shine boys are giving you stock tips, time to get out. And I was in Safeway the other night and these people are coming up to me, I did what you said, I did what you said, I bought a rental property, I bought a rental property. And I came back home and I said to Kim, I have to sell. It is so dangerous, but you can't talk somebody out of it because they drank the Kool-Aid. So that's why I'm really honored to have a dear friend, Richard Duncan, been friends for years. He helped Kim and I time the last turn back in 2008. We made fortunes because while everybody was selling, we were buying. And that time has come again. And so that's why please listen to what Richard Duncan has to say. A few months ago, the Fed was still creating $120 billion every month. And then in November, they said they were going to start tapering that, reducing that by $15 billion a month. But the very next month in December, they said they're going to double that and reduce it by $30 billion a month. And that meant that it's going to come to a complete stop. The money printing is going to end totally early next month. No more printing next month. No more printing. And then the real blow came because in early January, they started letting it be known that they were planning to do the opposite. Instead of printing a lot of money through quantitative easing, they're going to start destroying a lot of money through quantitative tightening. Now, when they print money, that pushes asset prices up. When they destroy money, that tends to make asset prices fall. And when they, the stock market could hurt that, they freak out. How do they destroy money? Well, they destroy money because when they print money, they buy bonds with that money. And normally when the bonds mature, they just roll them over and buy a similar kind of bond. But they destroy money by essentially selling those bonds. And when the Fed, what happens is the bonds mature and the Fed doesn't roll them over. Someone else has to buy the bond. So the Fed gets its money back. 
And when the Fed gets money back, that money just evaporates. The Fed doesn't need to keep any money because it can make all the money it wants anytime it wants to. So it's a bit complicated to explain in just a few sentences, but the bottom line is it's the opposite of quantitative easing. Quantitative tightening destroys money and that tends to make stock prices fall. And we're about to get a heavy dose of quantitative tightening coming into effect within the next couple of months. And it's going to make it harder and harder for mom and pop to go buy that house or expect they're going to flip. And isn't that going to drive inflation through the roof? Well, they think the opposite. When they, instead of printing money, that's the thing that normally causes inflation. It stimulates the economy. It creates growth. But when they destroy the money, that tends to make asset prices fall, like stocks and property. So people are less rich, so they spend less money. And if they spend less money, then prices tend to fall. So that's why they're doing this. They're worried now that the inflation rate has moved up to 7%, and they're taking steps to bring it back down. But what they may find is this could cause a significant stock market crash. And already last month, the S&P fell almost 10%, and NASDAQ fell 15% between the 4th and the 27th last month. And some of the high-flying stocks got hit a whole lot harder than that. Look at Meta or what Facebook, whatever those that goes I call now, they tanked. It lost 26% in a day, destroying $230 billion of American wealth. There goes your 401k, sweethearts. And that's why I spoke out against 401ks forever, you know? And all you guys who are going, you're planning on renting your property, people won't be able to afford the rents. That's what it means. Well, so total credit is equal to total debt because one person's loan is another person's debt, right? So the two have to equal each other. So one way of thinking about this, the easiest way to think about it is all the debt in the country. Government debt, household sector debt, corporate debt, financial sector debt, all the debt. It first went through $1 trillion in 1964 when I was four years old. Now it's $90 trillion, from $1 trillion to $90 trillion during my lifetime. And this credit explosion which would not have been possible if we had remained on a gold system where dollars were backed by gold. But this explosion of credit has transformed the world. Wait, Richard, hang on, hang on. You're speaking like an economist again. Credit is what the Fed and the Treasury allow people to get to the big banks, like Wells Fargo and all that. And that credit then allows people, the banks, to send out debt. So the corporations and individuals come in and they take credit and they turn it into debt, but it's the same thing. So by creating credit, debt could explode. Am I correct on that or incorrect? No, I think you put that exactly right. Yeah, credit's not a word people use. They use credit card, but they think about debt, their household debt, so that's what I'm saying. We don't teach economists. You know, we teach everyday mom and pop who is trying to speculate on their 401k or their house. The reason I tend to use credit is because I say this system that we have now is not capitalism, it's creditism. Yes. Creditism sounds better than debtism. I tried that. <laughs> debtism. <laughs> creditism works better. Yeah, well, capitalism to creditism. Because now, what credit Richard, growth what, drives economic growth now. We're dependent Richard, on it. Yeah, what Richard is saying is the way America grew was because we produced products. Now we don't produce products, they create credit or debt. Am I correct on that one? That's right. Instead of our economy being driven by investment and savings as it used to be, it's now driven by credit creation and consumption and more credit creation and consumption. And that's been great. The problem is it requires credit growth to survive. If credit contracts, we have a depression. And that has made us dependent now on government borrowing and government spending to keep us out of depression. So if you're going to buy, you know, I mean, I don't know how many people, oh, I took your advice. I bought a house. I'm going to make some money. I said, at the top of the frickin' market? And what about all these guys in this 401ks? 401ks came into existence in 1974. It was called ERISA. And I've been speaking out against 401ks because, I don't get censored with this one, but 401ks are like a condom. It gives you a false sense of security while you're being screwed. Do you know what I mean? And if this market crashes, when they raise these interest rates, if they do, you know, your 401k turns to 201k. Just as you get ready to retire, all you old guys like me, hear what I'm saying? If they raise interest rates because they're going to stop inflation, your 401k may be toast. 
I'm not saying it's going to happen. Or if you're a millennial and you got mom and dad who are living in La La Land with their two 401ks, you might be in serious trouble.